Welcome to another Bampai video and my name is Art and today we're reading manga and we're going to uh, find some cars and motorcycles in this manga. And the manga today is You're Under Arrest, also known as Tao Ho Tao Cho. I'm not sure if I correctly pronounced that, but you can always correct me on this matter. Um, about, speaking about corrections, uh, from the previous video we have one correction uh, th that was Gret CZ that corrected me on one of the pictures you can see right here. I said it was like a Gallant or maybe a Sprinter uh, and he says it's probably an S13 because it's a, a coupe and I was already aware of that it was a coupe, I couldn't identify it, but an S13 is very plausible. All right, let's get started with these mangas. So the mangas that you're looking at are uh, the translated mangas by Dark Horse Comics, the US comic distributor. And they did a lot of manga in uh, the 90s, and that's also why I got them. And this is a one out of eight. It doesn't start at the normal beginning of the series. They just started somewhere in the middle, and it didn't make sense because, you know, they did a spin-off uh, after uh, they, well, I'm a, I'm a goddess, they already translated that and it was hugely popular and they thought they could do this series as well, but it didn't prove to be very uh, popular compared to uh, I'm a goddess. Uh, also, they uh, took the existing Japanese manga and then mirrored it to match our uh, reading from left to right, while in Japan you actually read from right to left. So you, you will see in some cases that uh, they wrongly mirrored the, the whole manga. We'll see more of that. Uh, to get started with this first issue, I do four out of eight issues. I'll do a follow-up with the remaining four. Uh, why am I doing that? Well, because you can see that there's a lot to cover in this episode. So let's get started with the first episode. The first episode has a cover. I used to have like a very gigantic poster of this in my living room. It's I think the 1000, 1001 editions poster. Um, yeah, it was a really, really nice poster. Um, and it was uh, not like a normal poster, but it was like, uh, I don't know what it's called in, in English. It's like uh, printed on a thick material. Uh, anyway, uh, the motorbike that you're looking at and that I've been looking at for many, many years in my student uh, dorm uh, is a Kawasaki KSR 1100. I didn't know that back then, I had to look that up, but it's a, a KSR 110. It's a, a, a mini motorcycle from uh, the late 80s, early 90s. Um, the story starts with some Mazda Miata MX-5 NA or Yunus Roadster as they're called in Japan. The Yunus Roadster here is wrongly parked and uh, Natsuki is just picking it up and moving it, which is a bit weird. And this is like a, some sort of celebrity uh, that everyone is uh, very happy about, uh, but he owns that uh, Roadster. Um, he's, oh yeah, that's true. He, he's one of those Formula 3000 racers and that's why he's insanely popular. Um, anyway, the, the, the Yunus Roadster was like a new car in uh, 1989, so this is probably from 1989. It's the first edition and it, it's really a beautiful car and well engineered and it was something special for that day. Uh, furthermore, we can see the Honda Today over here. That's the first uh, generation Honda Today, and it's also the Zenki look. So uh, they, uh, the, the facelifted one's got square headlights instead of the round headlights that match kind of the Honda City. Um, this Honda Today is uh, a very sought-after car by the fans of this series because it's a very rare car, and it's actually never used that much for um, in, in daily practice and also because it's the Zenki version uh, it, it was only produced for like two or three years in this form. Uh, behind this police car is a high A second generation and then furthermore we cannot identify 
many cars here. Also, the, the Honda Today Police Special is, uh, you, you will see it throughout the series and also in uh, any other series that's a spin-off like the anime or the J-drama series of uh, the You're Under Arrest. They always use this car, so it's a bit weird seeing the J-drama that takes place like mid 2000s and they're still driving this old car between all the new cars. It's a bit weird. Uh, furthermore, we have a car over here that uh, I'll zoom in on that one. It looks like a police van, but also it looks like a VW Type 2, which is uh, a bit weird to be in Japan. Uh, maybe it was already one of those cave vans that uh, uh, looks like that. Uh, furthermore, that's not car related, but it was something that I thought worth mentioning. The computer over here, and this is also one of the things that is mirrored and that looks weird. Uh, the computer over here is a Sharp X68000. Uh, it's based on the Motorola 6800, uh, 68000 processor. And uh, it was basically one of the first, very first multimedia machines. It was a gaming console, it was multimedia. Um, and this was an insanely popular computer back in the late 80s, early 90s uh, in Japan. It's a bit comparable to what we know as the Commodore Amiga. And it also had similar features, similar games, and um, also it was closely related to some of the um, uh, arcade machines in the, in the arcades. So a lot of those arcade games got ported to this Sharp X68000. Uh, this is a sought after computer nowadays and I think LGR owns one uh, or he's looking for one and it's really nice uh, to see that actually being a new computer and being used in this manga. Uh, you can see here in this picture also that it's mirrored because the, the, the switches are supposed to be on the other side. Um, furthermore, what can we see here? We can see a Mazda Titan behind the uh, Roadster. Um, I, I can see that because of the details over here. Um, not much to say about that Titan though. Let's continue, big car chase. And here is the Moto Compo. The Moto Compo uh, was made popular in this series because it's a small foldable bike and they stuck that foldable bike in the rear of that Honda Today. It's actually not supposed to fit in the Honda Today, but in uh, the, this series they did uh, as like an extra chase vehicle. Uh, the Moto Compo is made popular nowadays by uh, being a retro bike and of course Mighty Car Mods featuring one and that was kind of what it took off. I think Pacific Coast Auto did a couple of videos on the Moto Compo and on the Honda City that it actually is an accessory to. Uh, Moto Compo is uh, uber cool, absolutely. Let's continue more storyline. Uh, oh, this storyline revolves around Natsuki trying to get her driving license. And you can see already here, that's a BMW 3 Series and she is bragging about this new uh, driving school that has the BMW 3 Series. So she's taking lessons in this uh, uber cool German car and it's uh, the... Uh, 3 Series second generation, if I'm correct. Uh, also, we've got a cameo here by uh, Tarachi Tamiya. Tamiya is one of the characters in Oh My Goddess, and he's one of the senpai of Keiichi Marizato. Ah, more uh, BMW, and as you can see, it's got nice rims as well. It's a really nice uh, BMW. Okay, and she finally passes her driving exam by sheer luck. Um, yeah, that's uh, kind of it for the first manga. Let's move on to the second manga, more Moto Compo. Moto Compo on the cover. Um, those sticks, it's like a baton stick um, with a flashlight that's being used by police officers uh, that are uh, patrolling the area to move uh, vehicles around, but it's also used by the Bozozoku, so it's a bit weird. 
Uh, anyway, Holland Motor Compo, uh, absolutely a very nice drawn picture of the Motor Compo and you can see the insides underneath. So on the inside we first have a picture of a Nissan Fair Lady Z, it's a Z32. It was a very new car back in those days and if I'm correct it's uh, only got delivered with a VG30 DEWT engine and it also set the benchmark for the horsepower cap. Anyway, uh, I'll, I'll do a bit more of that later. Uh, Natsuki got her uh, driving license, uh, she now looks for a car and ends up with a Subaru R2SS. Subaru R2SS is uh, basically a small uh, K car by Subaru and it's got like the 360cc engine that it uh, inherited from the predecessor called the Subaru uh, 360 and the 360 was in production for I think 11, 12 years but this R2 which is the successor of it wasn't that successful and it had many problems like uh, overheating issues and they changed it to water cooling this is a uh, pre-water cooling model as well uh, so it got overheating issues and uh, Subaru took it out of its misery after three years replacing it with a Subaru Rex uh, this particular model is a Subaru R2 SS and the R2 SS basically means that it's got like a, a better breathing car carburetor and a little bit more posh interior. Uh, also we can see here the Toyota Sports 800, I featured that earlier. The Sports 800 was actually intended as uh, a sporty car on top of the Publica and it proved to be very very popular and they sold many of those. They also sold like 300 of them in uh, left hand drive conversion for Okinawa uh, which is a different story. I have a video on the Sports 800 and I'll feature that right here. Let's move on. Uh, Subaru R30, uh, R2 actually proves to be a very very bad car and uh, it doesn't drive that well um, they try to drive it in traffic and it proves to be like broken all over and they try to uh, get it back to where she bought it from and then it ends up that they didn't actually sell it to her. Um, if you pay close attention you can see here the Shoshinja marks, the youth driver mark that everyone drives around here in uh, Europe and the US. It's like JDM yo but actually it means like I'm a very inexperienced driver. It's like what? Why do you want to drive with that? We can see here Honda Civic third generation at this uh, Honda dealer. I think it's a second hand already because the third generation was already um, no longer sold in 1989. Uh, it's also got a Honda City here uh, in the background and maybe a Honda Prelude over there. Not too sure about that one. Uh, so sh they cannot return the car and what then happens is that Miyuki replaces the engine with a motorcycle engine. Because the engine is like crap. Uh, painted in police colors of course, Kickstarter is still there. Uh, so they made this very very cool car with uh, the RZ RZV 500 V4 engine. Which is basically a in very insane engine in such a small car. Um, so they take off, uh, actually the license plate that uh, belongs to the car is from a scrapped car so this car is probably stolen. They try to figure out uh, the, the guy who sold it and he's over here driving off in a Supra A70 and it's a modified version or at least that's what he tells us. Um, it's an early model of the Supra, I think there was a facelift in 1987 or 1988, uh, meaning that uh, they closed off one of the vents here uh, and it's got a different bumper, so this is definitely a pre-facelift car. Uh, they tried to chase the Supra and they finally catch up with it with that very small dinky R2. Uh, they even kick out the door to keep it stable uh, and then basically crash the other car. Um, 
here's another story. Uh, I'm going to skip this one because there's nothing to actually see in here. There are no cars, no bikes, nothing of interest. So I'll skip this one. That's it for manga number two. Let's move on to manga number three. Uh, Moto Compo on the cover. Uh, th th this is also one that I'm going to skip. It's a uh, typically Japanese type of storyline about uh, nicking knickers. Um, but there aren't any new cars in here that we can show or anything else that's noteworthy. So let's move on to this small, what they call a Subaru R2 DX. And the DX is like a deluxe, but it's basically the R2 SS. And they just tell you about what kind of changes they made to the car. Um, let's move on. They're still trying to get that panty thief. No, 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 that's not true. This is a different story. This is about some bombing um, with another cameo over here. So we've got uh, Baldandi and Keiichi Morisato that are doing a cameo in this one. Uh, the fire truck over here is an Isuzu Forward. It's pre-1982, looking at the grill, which is very specific to this fire truck. Um, then there's uh, the end of the storyline. They uh, finally catch the guy by sheer surprise. Um, that's it for manga number three, which is very, very short. And manga number four contains a bit more cars. Okay, I have to take it from here again uh, because uh, the camera shut down. Maybe it's the heat. Uh, I, it got overheated because I'm uh, spotting too many cars. <laughs> Let's leave it at that. Uh, not much to see here on the cover. No bikes, no cars that we can identify. Uh, but there is a lot more that we can identify on the inside. Uh, the story on the inside is about some uh, mysterious motorcyclist uh, with a Ducati motorcycle. I'm not an expert on that. I don't know which one it is, uh, but I do know that it's a Ducati. Uh, behind the Ducati we can see a Nissan Condor, uh, which is a truck, a very big truck. Uh, it's, I think, one of the largest that Nissan produces. Um, also on the other side we can see a Nissan Sunny RZ1 in front of the Honda today. And I think it's the RZ1. I'm not 100% sure, but the shape looks uh, similar. The back spoiler looks very similar and it's also quite boxy. The Nissan Sunny RZ1 is based on uh, the normal Nissan Sunny, but then it has like a coupe version. And the engine in the Japanese version is the CA16DE. Uh, which outputs, I think, 120 horsepower, 121, something like that. Uh, but there's also uh, the European version of this very same car, which got sold as the Nissan Sunny Coupe. And I think Red CZ owned one once. Uh, and that one got as an option the CA18DE. I'm not sure if Red owned that version. Uh, there were also other engine choices. Let's continue on the story. Uh, that motorcyclist drives really sim similar to this police guy. He's also a motorcyclist and they are thinking that he might be actually the same guy. So they try to capture him. Uh, here they get like, that are passing a Nissan Fairlady ZZ32. I already spoke about the Z32 earlier. Uh, it's a very nice car, a uh, very nice achievement of Nissan. Uh, but it kind of uh, left the looks of the, uh, the traditional Fair Lady Z. Um, yeah, turns out the police guy had a, an alibi, so it can't be the same guy over here. Um, there was a car over here. I thought it was a mirror, but there was not too much detail on that, so I cannot be sure 100%. And on the other page we have a Honda CRX second generation. And this CRX is uh, actually quite a, an improvement over the traditional CRX. And the, uh, it, it featured a much better engine than uh, the previous generation. Previous generation was just like a first sporty coupe version of the, uh, of the Honda Civic. Um, so here we have the mysterious driver again. They're going to chase him using the Toyota Sports 800. And while they're chasing them, they also pass this Nissan Skyline GTR. It's a BNR 
which was a very new car back then and uh, it was such a new car um, that I think they deliberately put it here in traffic and there's another small picture of the, uh, the skyline and over here as well. Uh, in the back we can see what probably is a car with a skylight roof and it can be any Japanese van of this era that has that. Uh, turns out that this mysterious driver is his father and that's also why they have a similar driving style because his father learned him how to drive motorcycles. Uh, the storyline continues here from then onwards and then they have like, uh, stuff happening, let's put it that way. Uh, there's some sort of chase with a, another motorcyclist and this father with his Ducati starts to chase him. So they are chasing them as well and during this chase they pass an Isuzu Bellet and an Isuzu, Isuzu Bellet is uh, a very beautiful car by Isuzu. It's, the, it's not the predecessor of the 117, it's not a replace, it got, didn't get replaced by that 117 but it was basically a passenger car and um, it was a very very beautiful car and it even had a GTR version of that, the racing version that featured the 1.6 liter double overhead cam. That, that engine is also a very special and in Isuzu uh, special engine. Over here we have a Nissan Irvan or Caravan, uh, not entirely sure which one it is. Um, and that's it, that's the last car we can identify in this manga and also in this episode. And that also means that this is kind of the end of the episode. I featured all four of the mangas. I'm not sure how many cars we identified, uh, but it's probably 20 or 30. I'll put the real number over here somewhere. Uh, that's it for this video. I forgot to say during the introduction that uh, I know where the mangas are that I ordered from Japan. So that's Overrev and Shakatan Boogie. They ended up here at my doorstep. The courier thought I wasn't home, even though I was, and he just returned them to Japan without getting back a second time or the third time or leaving any note. So that was a bit weird. I uh, asked um, uh, from Japan to repost them, and this time you see fair because it's uh, well, it's, otherwise, it's just killing me paying twice the amount to get it here via airmail. That's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any comments, just leave them. If you have any uh, updates on things that you saw here, just leave them in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time. Pump it,